Riding a motorcycle is indeed a blast. Especially when you have an open stretch of road ahead and a series of bends on. But ever wonder what makes these motorcycles fun? This is where the engine takes most of the credit, but it is the drivetrain that puts the power from the engine down on the track. It's all too common to see a pair of sprockets connected through a chain, driving the rear wheel of a motorcycle. However, it's not the only final drive system used on motorcycles. In the market currently, there are three types of drivetrains in the two wheelers, chain drive, belt drive, and shaft drive. Which fares better of the lot? In this video, we will know about all three final drive systems for a motorcycle in detail, along with their favorability for various applications and their respective pros and cons. So be sure to like this video. Subscribe with a notification for more videos like this. In most of the motorcycles, chain drive is used to transmit the power to the rear wheels. This drivetrain requires two sprockets, one on the output shaft of the transmission and the other on the wheel. The sprocket size differs, depending upon the engine's power and torque output. For reference, KTM Duke 390 uses a bigger wheel sprocket than a Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. This is the drive system that an overwhelming majority of motorcycles implement. Chain and sprockets are the most efficient at transmitting power, with only 1-4% to transmission loss. That's significantly less than bell drives. Chain drives are very simple in their functioning and are very cost-effective to run and replace too. But do you know why chain drive is used in majority of motorcycles? Firstly, a chain drive is cheaper to research and manufacture. These are highly efficient in power transmission. Chain drives can operate in any conditions, be it wet or super dry can withstand high power and high speeds. Fairly convenient to repair and install. Chain drive experiences less slip. One of the very annoying disadvantage is that a chain drive requires frequent lubrication. This drive train is a bit heavy, the rider can experience speed fluctuations. The driving and driven sprocket must be perfectly aligned to reduce power losses. They have a lower service life. Almost every motorcycle on the road is chain-driven, so specifying one would be tough. A belt drive system isn't as common as a chain drive system. In terms of popularity, it stands at a distant second position. Talking about this drivetrain, usually cruisers are the ones that are belt-driven. Most of the motorcycles in the Harley-Davidson's lineup are a prominent example. The principle remains the same as the chain drive, instead of chain the two pulleys are connected by a belt, which has a teeth. One on the output shaft of the engine, and the other on the wheel. A belt connects both the pulleys, and it snugly fits on the grooves of the pulleys. The belt is made of a rubber, but mostly a very strong synthetic material, which lasts a very long time. You can expect a well-maintained belt drive on a motorcycle to last in excess of 100,000 kilometers or even more. Unlike chain drive, which requires very frequent cleaning, tightening and maintenance, belt drives are relative maintenance-free. They run clean as they don't have to be lubricated with sticky lubes and don't require cleaning either. Belt drive systems also run much smoother with much less jerks as compared to chain drives, and producing comparably less noise. Also they weight way less than a chain drive. So if a belt drive system offers so many advantages, then why aren't they used more commonly? Well, they have their own downsides. Belt drive systems are essentially costlier to produce than a chain sprocket system. Secondly, the power loss during the transmission, depending on how the system has been set up, ranges from 9 to 15 percent, which is quite high compared to a chain drive system. Also, while a belt drive system does not require regular maintenance, if ever the belt or any other components of the system give way, they are much more expensive to replace than the chain and sprocket setup.
To start off, shaft drive systems are the most expensive of the three systems we have here, and by some margin. They are, however, the sturdiest of the three, very smooth, and hardly ever need any maintenance. If designed and engineered well, drive shafts often last the life of a motorcycle without requiring any servicing or maintenance. This system, as the name suggests, comprises of a shaft that's connected to the gearbox output via a universal joint, which is essentially a coupling that facilitates transmission of rotary power at any selected angle. At the other end, the shaft is connected to the rear wheel hub by a spiral bevel gear. The bevel gear turns the direction of rotation of the shaft by 90 degrees, to make the wheel turn. This entire drive system is bathed in oil for lubrication, and sealed to protect it from any external elements, which makes it totally maintenance-free. Since shaft drive systems are heavy, expensive, and by themselves require more torque to work efficiently, they are not used on low-capacity or economy-oriented motorcycles. They are used on large-capacity motorcycles, which produce good amounts of torque. Also, since shaft drive systems are very sturdy and reliable, they are often used in motorcycles built for the purpose of adventure, sports touring, or adventure touring. In essence, these systems lend themselves very well for applications, where the motorcycles have to run for very long distances, or in treacherous conditions, where minimizing breakdown possibility is top priority. So if they're the sturdiest, then why don't all expensive bikes use them, since cost doesn't matter so much for the exotic machines? Well, to start off, they are way heavier than belt, or chain drive systems, which limits their usage in high-performance, super sport machines, where weight saving is crucial. Secondly, these systems lose a lot of power during transmission. They are the most inefficient of the trio we have here, and may bleed from 20 to 25% of the power, by the time they transfer it to the rear wheel. This is not good for performance-oriented motorcycles, where it's extremely important to make every horse count. We hope this detailed piece of information on various motorcycle drive systems answered most of your queries. If you still have any questions pertaining to these drive systems, do share them with us. Do not forget to share this video with your friends, who might find it useful. Click this video to find out more about belt drive system.